Hey there, this is Erica from Highland Hickory Designs and I'm back again today with another stitch tutorial to share with you. I really like this one. It creates this ribbing texture to the fabric. It is so nice and I think that it would be perfect for the cuffs on sweaters and dishcloths and dish towels and maybe even blankets, but it's not double-sided. On the front, you get this beautiful ribbing, but on the back, it looks a little different. It's still beautiful, but it's just different from the front. So I don't know if you would want to use that for double-sided items. It, maybe it would give it visual interest just because it was different on both sides. You never know. And get creative and see what you could come up with. But it's an easy two-row repeat, and there's only two stitches you need to know, the single crochet and the double crochet. For the double crochet, we'll be doing the front post double crochet, and it's easier than you think. We'll go over that in more detail here in a minute. If you'd like to see the written instructions, they'll be in the description box below, along with any timestamps or instructions on how to speed up or slow down a video if I go too fast or too slow for you. And in today's tutorial, we used I Love This Cotton and Bruschetta. And this is a size four medium weight yarn. And I just love this color. I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but it's almost like a burnt orange color. It's beautiful fall vibes. And the hook I used is an F 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. And just one more thing, the pattern I followed wasn't correct. It uh, had the wrong number of starting chains so that's why we have these open holes on the end, but I have corrected that and you shouldn't have any of this on the ends. So let's get started with the tutorial. So we're going to start out with a multiple of two and we're going to keep this pretty small. We're just going to start with a chain of 16. For row one, in the fifth chain from the hook, you're going to double crochet and then in every chain across, we're going to double crochet. And you will have an odd number of stitches and we include this last chain four as a double crochet as well. So you will have an odd number and I have 13. And you'll get an odd number for every row that you do. So for row two, chain one, turn your work, single crochet in the first stitch, and then single crochet in every stitch across. And you will put your last single crochet in the top of this turning chain. That's row two. Row three, we're going to chain two. <clears throat> Turn your work. Now, even though this is a chain two, we're going to count it as a double crochet. Um, I shortened it from a chain three just because it jutted out instead of having giving us a straight line. So you could do a chain three if you preferred, but I just thought the chain two was nicer. So we're going to skip this first stitch and we're going to be working our front post double crochet into the row one double crochets. We're not going to be working into these for the front post double crochets. We only work into the, this row for the regular double crochets and we're going to alternate front row double crochet front post double crochet, regular double crochet, front post double crochet, regular double crochet. So for the front post double crochet, these will be regular. This next one here is going to be our front post. So yarn over, insert your hook back behind the stitch, yarn over, Pull back through and pull it up nice and tall. Yarn over and finish your double crochet. Yarn over, 
that is a front post double crochet and we'll do plenty of those. So if you pull that forward, we're skipping this stitch because that's where the front post double crochet is. We're going to work a regular double crochet in this next stitch. And then we're going to repeat that pattern the whole way across. This is the one we're going to skip. And we're going to work a front post double crochet in this next one. So you're skipping every other double crochet from row one. Insert your hook around the back. Yarn over and pull up nice and tall. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through. So if you pull that forward, you're going to skip this stitch and this is the one that you'll double crochet into. Skip this one and we're going to front post double crochet in this next stitch around this next stitch. Pull up nice and tall. Finish your double crochet. Skip this stitch, double crochet in this stitch. Skip this stitch, front post double crochet around that stitch. Skip this one, double crochet in this one. Skip this stitch, front post double crochet around this one. Skip this stitch, double crochet around this one, or double crochet in this one. Skip this stitch, one more front post double crochet. And then in the last stitch, just a double crochet. And you should still have an odd number of stitches and you do count this chain two as a double crochet. So that is a stitch. For row four, chain one, turn your work and you're just going to single crochet across starting with that first stitch. That's the back, that's the front, and we'll do one more row. Chain two, which will count as a double crochet. And now all of your stitches are laid out for you. You'll just do front post double crochets around the ones that are already sticking out. So we'll since this is our first double crochet, the next one will be a front post. So we're going to skip all this. We're going to front post double crochet around the other front post double crochet. Skip this stitch, double crochet in this stitch. Front post double crochet around the next front post double crochet. Skip this stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and we'll just repeat that the whole way across. And double crochet in the last stitch. And as you can see it gets much easier once you have this line defined and you know exactly which stitches need to be front post double crochet. 
and if you can see I've eliminated the holes on the one side that were in my swatch. And you would just continue to alternate rows two and row three until you were satisfied with the length of your project. And when you're finished, you get this beautiful thick, so thick fabric that would be perfect for so many different applications or projects. I really enjoyed making this one. And I hope you do too. If you'd like to leave in the comments any ideas you have on what you would make with this pattern that would help out others, go ahead and feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you have a wonderful day.